Hello and welcome to the Once Driven Forever Smitten podcast, part three. I'm Dougie Rankin and I'm joined by... Pete Sell, how are you doing? Hello, Singapore correspondent. Yeah, I'm all right, thanks very much. <laughs> it is the middle of January. We're nearly through the worst month of the year and it's been relatively productive, which I'm uh, quite pleased about. We're getting somewhere with a few cars and things and um, getting quite a bit of content out there. How's yourself? What's the weather like in Singapore at the moment? Uh, you don't want to know since mid-January, so yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty warm. It's about thirty degrees today, so I don't think I don't, it's mid- technically rainy season. But I mean, it's mm. it's uh, they should come to England and work out what rainy season is like. So it's not that bad at all. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, no, you, it's good. You, it's been it's been right. You did send me a video last week of you water skiing or something. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's got to be some upsides to not messing around with old voxels, right? So um, yeah, that's uh, that was January's activity. But uh, you've had a pretty busy week. You've been well. You've had a busy couple of months actually on the voxel front. What what's been keeping you busy the last couple of weeks? Obviously, Cavaliers CDs back for another year. Yeah, I got the blue Caval- Yeah, I got the blue Cavalier back on the road, and there's a YouTube video series on that. There isn't the video yet, but it does the Johnny Groats to Lands End run which I um, did um, uh, over the festive season. And that went uh, really well. The car didn't give me any problems apart from it's got a short circuit occasionally on the, the uh, front side lights, and I don't know why. So I've got the, it was blowing the fuse uh, to both sides of the lights. So I've cut the wires for the, the rear lights and wired them in via the tow bar direct to the battery, which works. But you've just got to go and pop the bonnet every time you start the car to get the back lights working. But apart from that... Bit of car, extra drama on your run. Yeah, it did seventeen hundred. It did seventeen hundred miles in forty eight hours, and it's since done well over wow. two thousand miles. So, it needs a little bit of a shakedown now, but it's been, it's been uh, uh, brilliant. I can't knock it. I'm actually going to go back to John O'Groats with my dad, who who's seventy two and yeah. confessed that he's never been. So we're going to go up there with my uh, brother in law and my nephew to go and shoot all the cinematic and B roll footage for that. Then I'll have to go back to Land's End as well on an adventure to go and shoot all that because I was just like down there and back up, and it went. It went a lot better than I expected it to, to the point where yeah. I, I did time it and I can't publicly, you know what the time was, and I can't, <laughs> I can't it publicly was very release impressive. it because, it, very impressive. because um, it would incriminate myself. I honestly didn't think you'd be able to do that in such an old car. I probably hold a record of some sort for that, although we can't verify that. But um, we, can't, we can't do a podcast from prison, can we? So I think we're going to have to... Uh... Yeah, we'll just have to pass is, uh... it. The, the card was phenomenal, <laughs> though. Um, it's to the point where I think uh, the long gearing and it makes all the difference with the long F16 mm. gearbox. And now it's back on the road. It's kind of the first one I'm taking. I've got the insignia, no insignia, because we were talking about insignias <laughs> before we started the recording. I've got the Vectra and the Omega as well, yeah. uh, which um, are both MOT'd. And I'm thinking I might sell the Omega because of the price of petrol. Oh, really? Price of petrol, it's two gallons um, a journey worse off um, than the, the Cavalier or the Vectra. And I've got a couple of people who are interested in it. It's only done 33,000 miles. I think it deserves to be looked after and kind of cosseted. Um, I think you're not, right. Not kind of sitting just where I'm using it to chuck stuff in to go to the tip and everything yeah. like that. And I'm thinking, well, it's too hungry on fuel for what I'm doing. It's too short geared. Uh, <laughs> So I'm thinking, well, there's people that are interested in it. I think I could sell it. And uh, I did nearly buy a car this week because I, last week I did the Ooh. YouTube video where I looked at secondhand cars. And yeah. on the podcast today, we're going to look at some secondhand cars because you, you've got a list of them. I, I was going up to about two grand. You're being a bit more uh, posh and going yeah. between two and five grand. Uh, but I was looking at various cars and it was making me think about maybe changing something. Um, and I looked at some more to do a video for the coming week as well, which I'll try and get done later today. Uh, and I did find a car which I phoned up and tried to buy, which was a 1.2 litre Corsa B on a P Edge. The guy really? adver- the guy mm. advertised it for £595. It was a movie car company in Manchester that supplies yeah. cars to the BBC and everything. Um, but that had sold, and I wasn't surprised. I had quite a long conversation with a guy yesterday, and he said, I could have sold that 10 times over, and I says, well, you've underpriced it. Uh, I says, that's yeah. too cheap for that car. Uh, I really didn't think he was going to have it, but I thought, well, 595 quid. Uh, I thought the 1.2 would be horrendous, but the one, I thought, well, it'd be great as a daily driver, and if I wanted to, I've got that Astra saloon with a 1.6 single point, so I could like spend a day bung that in it. 
and then we, it would have exactly. been all right. It would have been all right. But um, it just made me really think that I suspect what I really don't want to do anymore is fall into the trap of having cars that are parked up for months and months and not being used. The brake discs grow rusty yeah. on them. It just knackers That's them, it. as I've found out to my cost. And the Omega is in danger of falling into that category. So, yeah, yeah I think it's going to go up for sale because it's just the best thing for mm. the car. Um I've nearly it's sad to see it go, but it's it's you know I think it is probably the right thing. You've got a few projects on the go, and you've got quite a few you know motorway crews, especially with the Cavalier CD back now as well. Yeah, well, um, well, that's 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 been a lot of work to get it back on the road. I mean, when, what year did you buy that? When twenty fourteen was... January twenty fourteen, I bought the Cavalier CD. Um, and that was a solid gel, right? Then you've had a. It was. It was more solid shocks. than I, a lot more solid than I expected because I only wanted the dashboard and the door cards on it for the GSI. Kensley yeah. decided he wanted to buy it after a while, so I'd put the SRI interior in on it, sold him it, then we put the valve on it, the XE, and then he sold it to a mate Wardy who blew the head gasket on it. Then I bought it back for seven hundred quid, rebuilt the yeah. top end of the engine, and then it's been on the road periodically since 2015 when I got it back but when it's been on the road it's been used hard um, yeah. it was off the road for nearly a year there when it failed the MOT big time February 2021 uh, and then of course when I dug into it the, the whole sides of the boot floor were rotten the backs of the sills and the inner sills are really rotten so I had a lot of work done to get it through the MOT uh, but yeah. since I've done it I'd, um, no it's been fantastic it just drives so nicely there's no vibration off the car sitting sitting at 90 miles an hour you can take it up over 100 and it just sits mm. perfectly and as you say as you say as well like the scottish winters with the amount of salt they chuck in the road yeah I mean, that, was that a car from was that a car from down south again not CD? massively down. it was from warrington but and it had yeah. it had actually had a bit of welding before i'd got it not a lot but it's still i think it's the new kind of salt that they're using in scotland it's just wet stuff and it seems to uh. be really uh, really invasive. It really corrodes the 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 body works badly. Yeah. So um, I've mm -hmm. I've now like Gravitex it, and I'm going to hit the Vectra with that. The GSI is going to need it as well, which I need to yeah uh, I need to get on with next. Um, I've got the Vectra C Estate sitting there as well, and I'm close to getting that to running. I'm, I'll hopefully get it done this weekend. Oh, so does that, that mean you've got your Tech Two clone got, sorted now? My Tech Two is working. It will now. The th the story with that is I had to get a new ECU for it because it had bent pins. Um, and Bad sign. The e yeah, the ECU has got no program on it now, so I need to reprogram it with the car, which means I needed a tech to, to do it. So I bought one, which is a Chinese um, clone version, but it's just like the real thing. Um, I got a guy to set it up for me that sells the diagnostic stuff, which I'm glad I did because I wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. So it's come preloaded with an Opal Vauxhall card and a Saab card, and he's put all the, the cracked TIS stuff onto my old laptop. But because yeah. it's Windows say, 7, it's super slow. Those 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 clones as well now, because I've just been able to see a, a, a mate who's um, left the corporate world and he's basically doing his own classic car business and just general uh, business for, you know, modern more supercars and everything, basically. And he's actually managed to get quite a few clones and he can pretty much deal with like 90% of stuff now, which is amazing. So he's got loads of different sort of software programs and hardware things, but it just shows if you're if you persevere you can probably get i mean your your tech too have you tried it yet is it is it good yep yeah yep. i've deleted a code out the vectra b and i've had it plugged into the vectra yeah. c and i did manage to download the information from the car but that yeah. then needs to be fed back into the laptop from the tech too right um, and with this being like 90s technology it's got like this modem cable with a weird end on it it's not just usb so right. it, didn't, it didn't fit into my laptop. So I had to go and I phoned them up. I said, well, I said, this doesn't have it. He says, right, what you need is to order this cable off eBay. So I've ordered that and it's got this funny end on it. So connect them together, then it goes into the laptop. But the disc with the drivers on it came and it was broken. So I had to go online and it took ages for it to download the drivers for it. Now it works. So when I go back out there, plug it in, it should be able to download the information from the car and then re-upload whatever it is from TIS into the tech too. So it gives the car its identity back and then it will start, which means I'll have another car on the road for the time yeah. being, which will be useful. So um, I won't probably run that one for too long. I'll need to get that yeah. up for sale, but it would be nice to have it on the road and running properly because that's, I mean, although it was misfiring the whole time I had it, it was actually really, it is a, 
a Vectra C Elite um, nav with six-speed manuals, a lovely car to drive. So that's to get that's to come back on the road and go as well. So I think the two big estates are going to go. I may look into getting another estate of some sort. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It depends what comes up really. Um, depends what depends what's um, out there. Um, I've been looking at Insignia some... Sports Tours actually, which I think are a cracking looking estate, but they just they don't have the space probably that the Amiga or the Vectra has. Mm. I would say that's sort yeah. of sloping rear loop line, but I I'll have a faster state. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter massively. I mean, another Mark. If I could get a Mark Three Astra estate, like one that's got a bit of spec, like a diamond, you know, something a bit yeah. a bit random, then I would happily um, have that. But it just depends what comes up at any one time um but, good champ. You know, those two can go and then i can get some money back in as well because that's it's important not to have too much money laid out in cars and i want stuff that can um <laughs> i can use and i can produce a bit of content for um ones driven as well definitely definitely so um actually you just mentioned or you touched on um buying a course of b and um as you put up on our Instagram page last week, the course was in fact the, the best selling car for the year in 2021. And that means it's the first time a Vauxhall was being the best selling car in the UK um, ever, which is quite remarkable because, um, you know, we've, I think there's been some pretty good products over the years. And uh, yeah, I is, didn't but... suspect this was going to be the year that Vauxhall were going to be number one. Well, it, was, it, it was, it was the, ca the Cavaliers were the ones that came the closest to, to beating Ford. There were a couple of years. Yeah. There were, indivi there were individual months during the 80s and 90s where the Cavalier was a top-selling car, and it had finished second a few years, but it had never actually managed to beat the Escort. What you find yeah. now is that Corsas and Fiestas are so big that people that used to buy Astras now just buy them. Absolutely. So, yeah, fair, absolutely. Um, it's good news for Vauxhall that they managed to do that. There's some, Stellantis have pulled them out the fleet market and the rental market where they were plowing in enormous volumes of cars. Uh, with no profit margin and then they had you know the cars that were coming back they didn't have a lot of value in them so it was like considered a toxic unsustainable yeah. business plan which Stellantis have taken them away from I don't I don't necessarily have an issue with the cars not being General Motors anymore because um, General Motors aren't doing a particularly great job of things over in America um, no, that's very true but the, the thing yeah. that annoys me about Stellantis is that we've got no sports models and I think that sports and prestige models are important for the rest of the range where's the VXR and the SRI and the GSI we've got an insignia GSI which is about to be binned for an SUV um, which yeah. is fair enough because that model of car doesn't sell the Mondeo is about to get killed off as well people do not want large family D segment cars hatchbacks. Yeah. They don't they want that unless it's a BMW 3 Series or a, an Audi A4, then they still sell. But yeah, we just don't. I'm like, where's our VXR range? You know, come on, can you not even hybrid or electric sort of based cars? You know, where's our performance well, division? Maybe it's gonna maybe it's gonna come because you know, GM were trying to turn around uh, you know, Voxel open in Europe for over 20 years, couldn't turn a profit, and then Brexit happened, and that probably would have been the time that they actually made money, but it, you know, didn't didn't happen. And then all of a sudden, Stellantis have managed to make it work from basically the second year, and they're now making money. But you know, they've had to obviously consolidate the range and the platforms quite a lot. So if they're now making money, then hopefully they'll start to bring back, you know, the sub brands that we love. Um, yeah, well, I, I hope it, so because I I've given it yeah because I've thought about that and I'm like the fact that it's Stellantis and the fact that it might be. Uh, Peugeot Citroen based vehicles doesn't wind, doesn't necessarily offend me that much anyway because the new platforms that Vauxhall were using are they're all going to be they're all kind of the same anyway they don't we're not it's not like we're losing the red top engine or the Z20 LEH or anything all that's gone anyway right. it's yeah, almost modern absolutely. technology that's going to be moving towards electrics and things and probably hydrogen in the future there's not yeah. there's going to be increasingly a less role for petrol powered. Uh, uh, cars moving forward anyway yeah I've been, I've been watching was. I've been watching quite a lot of stuff about um, electrics as well on YouTube have you ever watched Rich Rebuilds uh, I don't think I have no Tesla no. guy he's, he's put he's done a lot of Tesla stuff over the years this guy in New Hampshire in America 
and yeah. he's wound Tesla up a lot over the years because he's been messing about with these cars and taking them apart and fixing them and modifying them, which Tesla oh, really? are notoriously <laughs> against. They don't want you messing with a product. He's since he's, he's since gone and built a Tesla with a LS uh, Corvette V8 engine in it. Um, and took it to nice. SEMA, which wound people up. But he's also putting a Tesla engine in an old Corvette, like a Tesla motor. So it's intro- and they've built, yeah. like, they've built like a Mini Cooper with an electric motor in it and stuff. And is that that technology is going to come online as well, where you can, it's going to be possible for people to DIY electric motors on yeah. vehicles as well. And I was like, I would have a go well, at that. When, when, th- when, t- when the technology gets affordable enough, to go and do it, to buy an electric motor, maybe get some bits, yeah. maybe, you know, I don't know what you would get out of scrap Prius or something like that, but I would have a go at it with an old Vauxhall. You know, I could get a Cavalier and go and bang an electric motor on it. I would be up for that. The trick well, is, I... the tricky thing is aircon and power steering and uh, cruise Older control, things like that, yeah. because you don't, it's easy to put it in an old Viva or a Chevette where you don't have anything. But if you want that other stuff, so I'd be quite up for that, to be honest with you. Well, I think I sent you a picture of, um, there was one of the guys um, in the Nova forum who was giving it a go. I don't know if it was Tesla hardware he was using, but basically he managed to get the electric motor in, taking the engine out, all this tough stuff. And uh, in theory, I mean, the weight of a Nova, and if you're looking at batteries and, you know, uh, electric motor from a Tesla, that thing will absolutely fly. If he can make that work. Yeah. And um, (laughs) the the thing is, it's it's how many... It's the battery packs um, are really heavy, which cuts down in your range. But these electric motors have got phenomenal power in them. Um, oh. And as time goes, I mean, obviously you can get an e corsa now and you can get loads of other full electric cars yeah. from the mainstream manufacturers. And as, as time rolls on a few years and things like that, these will get smashed and things yeah, will get written absolutely. off and won't be able to go back on the road. So people will be able to get a hold of them and strip the electrics out of them. And they're actually very simple compared to a lot of modern engines because they don't have emissions equipment on them. It's just an electric motor. Um, yeah. And I think... Imagine going to Santapod in a few years when it's just like silence and there's cars doing like 10 second quarter of miles and then just like normal family cars. It's going to be, it's going yeah, to be nuts. It is. I, I'm not, and I'm not, not adverse to it. I think it's all right to be interested and like both. I've never driven an electric car or anything like that, but um, I'm hoping that as the channel continues to grow, that I might be able to get in with Vauxhall and they might be like, say, be kind enough to let me have one to go and test it. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, well, you know, it's, I think it's still a phenomenal achievement of the, um, the courses number one this year. How many did it say? It was about 40,000 last year. Yeah, it did, it, it, it did well. Yeah, yeah, it's appealing. And that's the new model as well, which is based on the Peugeot 208. Yeah. Uh, sort of yeah. platform, platform uh, which is rolled out to loads and loads of different cars. Uh, there's obviously, there's, there's a full electric one. There's not any performance petrol ones. So I would imagine yeah. that what, what we're going to be looking at if they do do performance models is they're going to be electric or hybrid. Yeah, They're not going to see yeah. a pure petrol one as that would be seen as a retrograde step. Yeah, um, no, I think you're right. I think you're so right. Like, but those on, numbers, I mean, mm. com- compared to the 90s, right? I mean, the Cavalier would have been number one well, Every and, year, if we looked at the last five, ten years, I think I think you brought up some figures from 1992. I think the top selling car, interestingly, that year was the Escort, uh, which was yeah. always the top seller. And the Escort in 1992, that was the J and K Edge, was garbage. That was yeah. that was one of the worst cars that you could buy in that segment. There were far better uh, alternate options that you could have gone for, and it was still by far and away the best seller. 140,000 it sold, I think. Uh, 121,140 with the Cavalier, 108,808. That's so, ph- that just phenomenal. That shows you that that's why Cavaliers retain the popularity and interest in them that they've got today yeah. because the 108,000 they sold in one year. <laughs> it's mad. It's over 2,000. So, they were selling over 2,000 a week. You know, that's yeah. just insane. Insane nuts, numbers. Isn't it? That is nuts. But yeah, I mean, the Corsa B, um, going back to the car that you tried to buy, I think it's now starting to be appreciated a bit more, especially as you say, you know, more modern cars are getting bigger, heavier. Um, I suppose at the time when I was probably one of these people, I was like, well, it's a little bit a little bit heavier than the Nova and it doesn't doesn't quite look, you know, it doesn't have sort of the motorsport box arches and all this type mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, but actually, you know, um, if I could rewind the clock, I need bought a 
course of GSI, I think it had done like 60,000 miles. This was like mm. 10, 12 years ago, 600 quid. You know, it was in the, the launch color. Um, it sort of must have been like an L, L, L wedge, I think. Yeah, and, and in that car now, if it had been a fairly good nick car, would be worth a huge amount more money. What you want, you're so, worth um, a fortune as well. And that 1.6 engine, it was it yeah. was famously restricted by Vauxhall. That one, the C16 XE, and uh, the X16 XE that came after that, uh, that that engine when they first had it out was making like 140 yeah. horsepower. It was nearly as powerful as the two liter C20 yeah. XE. So they had to go and fit that restrictive and like manifold on it to bring it down to 109 horsepower. And all you need to do is buy, like Lexmall did them, and there was another company that did right. them as well. Mm-hmm. Can't remember the name. You put the manifold on it, bang, 140 horsepower off the bat. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty good. Which, and which, that, was, which, um, that also accounts for the, the latest 1.6 16 valve, which ran right through the Mark for the Astra, and it was even in the Vectra B as well. <laughs> cracking engine, absolutely cracking engine. Do you remember the, um, the sort of launch they did with that with Naomi Campbell and... Uh, Kate yeah, I put, it in, that was, I put it in the video. Point, I put point. a couple of the I put a couple of the screenshots yeah. of the supermodel things in the video yeah. that I put up on Saturday. I had a, a, yeah a whole variety of supermodels, Helena Christensen and all that, like that posing yeah. with the Corsa, and it, yeah, it was a massive, it was a massive success. Even though the car didn't handle particularly well, or mm. like the one point two was notably gutless uh, at the launch, yeah. forty five horsepower thing. Um, but nobody, you know, people didn't mind too much about that. I, I put a turbo diesel one up last week as well, which garnered quite a lot of interest. And I would, yeah. I, I would, it's something that I would, I would contemplate if I could get one for the, one for the the, the right price, even a five door. I'd quite happily have one of them, just even yeah. for more for the sort of um, sleeper aspect. I'm going to keep an eye, keep an eye on them because if I get rid of the two bigger cars, I might get one smaller car. You know, I might not get an estate yeah. or something. I don't necessarily need one. I'll we'll just keep. I'll keep an open mind to whatever, whatever comes Didn't up. Didn't they? Right? Um, who did they have advertised the course of CDX as well? Was it Ruby? Um, just the full leather interior, well, optional leather interior in the course yeah, of it. Yeah, there was one for now, there was one for sale on eBay, a one point two automatic sixteen valve with the aircon. Really? Yeah, that was I mean, on, that was on eBay last week. Huh? That's that's a rare car, isn't it? Yeah, it was Ruby Wax. I'm sure it was Ruby Wax who advertised that car. I'm gonna to have to go and YouTube it now and find out. I'd like a CD. Yeah, I would just... like a CDX. Anything old, anything nineties with aircon in it. I'm quite into that. You know that. Yeah. That that yeah. Um, fascinates me. Um, Rarest Corsa B ever. What do you reckon that convertible did? Probably it like that. had a climb. Remember, it had a climbing frame on the back. Basically, it was awful. It was not not a well done um, car at all. But I reckon that's properly rare. I'll have to send you a few. Do you, do you remember that or not? Vaguely, I did. I don't have like a, a back on it that was like you stuck on with studs or something like that. It was probably, yeah. Weird it, convertible it looked thing. Like a huge afterthought. There you go. I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we can. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, can't, be many, can't be many of them going about, you know. That's... No. <laughs> that's sort of the thing. If you asked me to make that into a convertible, that's probably what I would have come up with, to be fair. Just weld some bits in the back, you'll be fine. No That's me. But um, anyway, what we've done is because I went and did the video last week looking at cars up to two thousand pounds, and I've got another few selection of them which I'm not going to do here because we're going to do your cars. But you've been looking at cars between two thousand and five thousand uh, pounds yes. potential used buys in the land of um, Vauxhall. So yeah, what have you got? Absolutely. So. Um, First off is a car which I think is forgotten in the performance box of the world. Um, I've got a 2005 Vectra 3.2 V6 GSI hatchback. Now, compared to obviously uh, Vectra B, it didn't really look that exciting at all. In fact, oh. it was quite hard to pick it out versus the SRI. So it was fairly restrained. It's hard um, to pick it out against any of any of them. Really, you literally only got dark headlights and a very slightly yeah. different shaped bumper. They just made no effort at all with the styling on that car when it came out, and as a result, no. it just kind of sailed right under the radar um, until the the VXR came out, and then that completely overshadowed it as well. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, the, so this is up for uh, two double nine five. This car here, 
um, 97,000 miles, fairly straight. I think it's got, yeah, it's got full Vauxhall service history as well. That they've makes a noted, difference. Yeah. Because Huge, yeah. A lot of them can be quite miley and they've been run into the ground as well. People don't keep the maintenance up on them all that well. But obviously, being a GSI, it's got uh, 3.2, which is 225 horsepower in them, is it? Yeah, it was. It was, okay, it was, it was pretty good. high, yeah. Yeah, fair bit. You know that's gonna that's gonna shift that. They're only the five speed manuals in them. The six speed yeah. didn't come in yet. Um, which I think I'm not so sure. I, um, I, I'm not sure there's much of a difference between the five and the six speed, really. No, I don't. And actually, probably the best publicity from this car was when that uh, policeman got caught doing 159 miles an hour, um, and ended right up enough. having to go to court. And uh, yes. basically, <laughs> he was like. Well, I was just testing the car, you know, high speed testing. So I think he got away with it actually as well. But yeah, he was good 159 miles an hour cruising around in his extra GSI, which I think was over the top speed that Vauxhall yeah. quoted as well. So yeah. Vauxhall was probably do. pretty happy with that. <laughs> I do I do like that. It's a car I would it's a car I would consider it's just such a sleeper as well, because the so their advantage is they made no effort with the styling. There's not even a boot spoiler on, on the thing. So it looks no. completely uh, that would that would catch a lot of people out. And it would have done Absolutely. back in the day. Still, still um, a quick car now. Yes, I, uh, I like that. Possibly going to appreciate in value as well. Um, yeah, we're going to. And I, I can imagine some of these cars few, bottom out soon. Absolutely, I can imagine quite a few getting uh, scraps over the years as well. And you know, it'll probably end up being a, a really rare car. In fact, actually, my uncle had one as a um, demonstrator, and I must have been quite young at the time, but I drove it to Branch Hatch to watch the BTCC with him and had a really short burst gear, but on the motorway, it just carried on pulling and pulling. Um, probably needed an exhaust on it. It was, I felt it was a bit too quiet for, you know, a GSI um, B6, but um, yeah, load of car for the money. That one's 2995, full voxel service history. Um, can't really, can't really. I think it's worth uh, it for it's, it's a little bit more than you'll find some of them for. I did I had a couple of them popped up in the last uh, week or so when I was looking, but they were rough. Mm. And if you're going to buy one for fifteen hundred quid, you could spend for another fifteen hundred on it, and it still won't be anywhere near as nice as that one. Yeah, yeah. So strangely enough, I seem to have a bit of a police thing going on here at the moment. But um, the next car um, I picked was the uh, Vauxhall Insignia two point eight V six. Four wheel drive, but this is actually an ex police car. That's a saloon as well. It's a saloon, which I think looks absolutely fantastic in the insignia. I think they look brilliant. Um, but it's also got the big Brembo brakes, which you get from um, the GSI as well. Sorry, the VXR. Um, obviously, it's done a it's done a bit of mileage, but you know it's going to have you know full Vauxhall service history. Um, and uh, the Brembo well, brakes, interestingly, that's... fitted by you know the, the police. Um, so. Yeah, bit of an interesting one that, and of that course you can remap it. That's that's a lot of car for the money. Most of the performance, two sixty horsepower. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see yeah. what, that'll be what it's listed as. It'd be interesting to see what it is on a rolling road. Uh, I suspect Absolutely. it might. I suspect it might not be two hundred and sixty horsepower, but it looks. Yeah. Yeah, it's like steel grey saloon, and it's got absolutely nothing to indicate it's anything other than. Um, a, a diesel 140 horsepower uh, insignia. Yeah, that's three and a half grand. That's a phenomenal amount of motor for the for the money. 101,000 miles. So it's not yeah. intergalactic. Obviously, the concern with those is the um, the Holdex four wheel drive system, isn't it? That's got a habit or a potential to grenade itself. But it's if it's been in the police then, uh, and it's been a surveillance vehicle, then you would hope that it's perhaps not been banging up over curbs and things in, in Reading like they were on Road Wars. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you'd hope so. I mean, that, oh, that four-wheel drive system is always... That um, sounds like you're about to make a phone call. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, I mean, that was it's the same um, system that's on the Focus RS as well, isn't it? Or mm -hmm. some different calibration and stuff. But, um, yeah, I, think, I remember driving a... I think I did a review for Total Voxel back in the day, and that was the 4x4 version um SRI and um actually when you pushed on I thought they were, they were yeah, pretty I, good cars and then I had the VXR um in 2009 when the insignia VXR first came out I had one for a week uh, and I had it up in yeah. Scotland and I ran it along I did some really uh, good driving on roads in Scotland and, and it was yeah it stuck to the road like glue it was a real kind of 
potential yeah. license loser. And with a four-wheel drive as well, it wasn't adverse to sending power to the back wheels. If you were to go into a roundabout and sling it and put the foot down, it would lose the power at the front and send it to the back. So the back would step out on it uh, quite, impre yeah. quite impressively. <laughs> Sounds yeah, like you had a few interesting I mean, moments. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the first couple of times it did it when you weren't expecting it to, it was quite scary. A three and a half grand for that, a 2011 Insignia 2.8 V6 Turbo Police Special. Yeah. Mm, nice. Now, see, this yeah. is the thing. If I went and sold the Omega and sold that other Vectra and things, then I would have a slush fund of money to go and get things. But at the moment, I don't have skint, so, you know. There you go. Well, getting those other cars sold, then potentially that could... Uh... Yeah, that could that's... be um, interesting, but I mean, it's, as you can see from the picture, it's just it's in a garage um, as mm. well, and you can, it's just had a full ceramic coat and full ballet, so it's obviously been pretty well looked after post police as well. So, actually, the more I'm talking about it, the more I want to give the car a call. And actually, well, why don't you just why just... don't why don't you buy it and I'll go and get it and look after it for you? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Hmm, it's quite tempting, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, no, I thought, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought I'd go for this because, as you, you know, the, the BXRs are coming down in price quite a bit, and that would be it seems interest. to be. It's not quite within budget of the five grand budget that we've set for this. I think I saw mm. the cheapest one for like five double nine five, um, but you know, I think you've got ninety percent of the car there, and you've got the, the, the sleeper element as well, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. That'd be great for terrorising people with big Audis. That you know, when they just can't yeah. shift shift this insignia from the man on arts yeah good, good that's stuff, not even a bxr uh, what's going on <laughs> mm. um so uh a couple more for you um i have gone for now this is a bit of a debate as to whether or not this is worth this and you know every week uh prices seem to change but this is a mark three um cavalier sri but with a saab turbo so the b204 engine mm -hmm. in it um now you know the argument is that it's lost its originality and so it's it's also running um put some pictures up but it's running um cavalier turbo calibre turbo wheels on it other than that it looks fairly standard it's quite a low car the interior looks fairly fairly yeah, mint and this is up the... for 5495 so it's the top end of probably what you'd want to pay for this but you know the argument is is it worth that I would probably say yes now with the price gearbox, of Mark Three Cavaliers. What, what gearbox? Yeah, because anything Cavalier SRI is going for crazy money now. There's one with no engine in it, which isn't a particularly nice example, which is up for, it was up for like 1,500, it was bids on it beyond 1,500 quid, um, which mm. was just basically a shell and all the interior had been taken out and thrown inside it. And it was like, mm. uh, so Saab don't, engines, don't know what a gearbox uh, is. Yeah, Not we don't sure. know what the gearbox is. If it's an F twenty eight six speed, then I would consider maybe it depends. What, it depends what you want. You maybe wouldn't be able to build one for that. If you wanted to, you could easily remove the engine and go and put it back to. Um, well, it would have a, it would, on an end reg. It would have an EcoTech in it. If you are going to um, if you're going to retrofit it, you would go and put an XE in it and put the four stud wheels back on it. Which I don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's quite an interesting idea as well because if you decided that actually the money was with the standard car after a few years of running around with your, your turbo engine in, you do exactly mm -hmm. what you've said and then actually maybe it'll be worth the same if not more. Who knows what Cavalier prices will do? It wouldn't but, it, um, because I, I've got stuff. To, I've got a Saab engine sitting and I've got the ability to build them by myself, so it wouldn't be something that I would consider. But for some, yeah, mm -hmm. I've got a B two or four sitting. Um, and maybe the Saab gear, maybe the Saab gearbox is on it because they go straight in. Um, it wouldn't be something that I would um, spend yeah. on. But if it's somebody who's not like mechanically sort of um, yeah. minded or and just want a complete car, then it's potentially worth that mm. because you wouldn't be able to build something uh, for that for that sort of money. Yeah, but want a good look underneath it to make sure it's all dry and check the MOT history because you don't want something that's been getting welded up and welded up things. But it does look clean enough from the from the yeah. Um, the outs outside of it, I oh. looks like they've had the archers done at some point, but the advert is not great. And you know, no, it's that know, car garage, it's that garage as well. Yeah, they're probably lost with this, aren't they? I don't know what it's about. I don't know how they've, so, ended, how they've ended up with it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a gem, maybe there's a, a story that's there to tell that we don't know about, but um, it might be the mechanic that works there's car or something, they don't know. Yeah. Absolutely, could be potentially. Didn't know you had a B two hundred four sitting there. It's interesting. 
Yeah, just, uh, and yeah, I've had it sitting for about 10 years. They were worth about 200 quid, and now they're steadily becoming worth more money. So it's um, got to contemplate what to do with it at some point, the right car to go and fit that, fit that in. Um, not in any hurry to do anything with it, but I will do it at some point. Well, you know, feel free to blow up my eight valve in my Nova if you want next time well, you drive it. <laughs> well, the idea is Ken, Kenzo's Nova is going to be road legal in the next couple of weeks, and what we're going to do is... We're going, once it's road legal, we're going to run it down to get your Nova um, yeah. and then do a bit of running about with them and then go take yours up and give it a service and a once over, then bring it back again. So the two Novas together, it'd be interesting to compare the two litre against the little the 1600 that we've got um, side to side. So that'll be, that's coming up in the next couple of, week, couple of weeks, a bit of um, plenty of Nova action. So. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what's number four, an Astra VXR? S- so Astra VXR. Um, mm. Silver. Now, silver, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can take your pick, right? There is so many Astra VXRs for sale out there because they were supremely popular. Um, and I think if you just like rewind the clock to 2006, what a huge step on. I think, is it the Mark V Golf that had just come out and it had like 197 horsepower? I hadn't really moved the game on at all. The Focus ST came out. I think that was 220 Yes, and this was 225, and this was 237. It was just just nuts at the time, I think. I hadn't hadn't been long started in Total Vauxhall, and they provided us with one of the pre-production VXRs before they were officially on sale. What a reaction that car got. Like, people were crazy for it. Like, it stood out so much, and it made such a good noise. Like, somebody literally walked into a lamppost staring at it, (laughs) and it was amazing (laughs) because it had these... uh, the Astra GSI before it was nice, but it was always, it was never like top of the class. It was never, you yeah. know, it was always like you felt like it could it could do more. And people always had to modify them to get them up to that standard. But the Astra VXR just came like that out of the box. You had the enormous yeah. fat Recaro seats, the big thick steering wheel in them, and the six-speed box, and the, the power out them is standard. It was just fantastic. Oh, it was just it was flat. Phenomenal, just wasn't it? Really, uh, really... Um, wild car people complained about about the torque steer and the sort of wheel scrabble but it was to anybody that was actually used to driving old fast voxels it wasn't an issue and they were yeah. so massively popular which is then you go back to like Stellantis have got a brand sitting there that would do really well if they were to bring it back you know yeah absolutely and um yeah it was just it was just that bit ahead of everything else when it came out the, and the um, as, you, as you said oh. You know, if if you've driven a Mark II Astra GT or anything like this, mm-hmm. you know, Jeremy Clarkson brought up the torque steer and he took his hand off a steering wheel on TV and he was like, oh, look, it's going to going to the left. I'm like, of course it's going to go to the left. You know, it's nearly mm-hmm. 240 horsepower through the front wheels. But, uh, um, so this one that we're looking at here looks almost standard as well because an issue with a lot of them has been customised and not always very nicely, um, yeah. which really it digs into which would dig into the desirability and the resale value. For me, this one's got the 19s on it. Um, I said has, sil- silver as well, which is one of the, the probably the rarest of the colour options. Um, and it, yeah. does look, it does look um, very original. Has it had? It but, has it, it's, got a mil- it's got a Miltec, hard boost pipes, updated recirculation valve, remapped to two. So basically, it's, it's as near as standard um, as yeah. you're going to get. 77,000 miles, full service history, yeah. Long MOT, yep, I, yeah, I, I like that. A lot of us in the market for a VXR 4250. Yeah, and you know what? You can take your pick out there. There was a few I could have gone for, um, but as you say, a lot of them have got big power now, and really the smart money is going for something that's nearly standard that you can take back um, yeah. to standard in a few years' time when the rest of them rust or get crashed or whatever that happens it's to a, them. It's a car um, that's going to, they're definitely going to appreciate in value. Um, yeah, especially as time goes on when you can't as we move towards 2030 and this supposed ban on petrol vehicles and things when you can't yeah. get new ones anymore and things stuff like this is going to go up in value because people are going to get it and hold on yeah. to it because there aren't going to be any more yeah so absolutely definitely, and it definitely was, an investment at, at that at under well under five thousand yeah. pound i would say yeah absolutely and i think um you know uh it's it was that era, wasn't it, when VXR was starting off, and it was the start of something quite exciting for the Vauxhall brand at that time. 
Um, obviously had the, the Monaro and the VXR sort of launched the VXR brand, but this was the car that really mattered. And this was the one that sold mm -hmm. a huge amount of over, over the next few years. Um, and actually, again, my uncle uh, had one as a demonstrator and I was lucky enough. I think it must have been 18 or 19 um, mm -hmm. when it first came out. And uh, I was like, oh, can I go down to Guildford Cruise in your car? And Pete's like, yeah, fine, off you go. So um, me and a couple of mates went down to Guildford Cruise and uh, we parked up. So it was Arden Blue Astra VXR. And we ended up parking up next to the sort of Asbo Orange that the, the Focus ST came. So someone else had got a brand new Focus ST and then we pulled uh -huh. up with the Astra VXR. And I tell you what, it caused such a stir because obviously there was so much about the two cars when they were coming out and you know how much power they had for a, for a hot hatch at the time. Obviously those numbers are just, you know, you look at hot hatches these days with like, uh, Three four hundred horsepower, it's mad, but at the time, it's really nice. that's front wheel, front wheel drive as well. Because back in the early 90s, um, they were saying 150 horsepower is too much for a front wheel drive car, yeah. And I never really got it with those journalists that were saying, Oh, the car's uncontrollable. Because the Astra GT 16 valve, it was a bit they're not any use, they're not good in the wet, but in the dry, you could throw them about no problem at all. I never got this sort of the other excitement and controversy over you can't put that much power through the front wheels of a car because meanwhile like down at Courtney Sport they're putting turbo engines and Novas in the mid 90s and everybody yep. else all your garage your garage home mechanics started doing all the same thing all over the country and we're building cars with 300 horsepower and these these ancient you know Novas and Mark II Astros and things and they're like no problem and then yes. these stupid car journalists are like oh it's too much and it's like, oh, piss off yeah Ten anyway, years later, exactly. <laughs> you got, you know, what's a Honda Civic these days? That's still front wheel drive as well. I think that's that's well over three hundred horsepower these days. I think from memory. No so, problem. Yeah. Uh, what's what yeah. we got for car number five? Well, car number five has disappeared actually. So I had a couple here, which um, but we were looking at a ideally um, so a Vectra C two point eight twin turbo um, state. Mm. So I quite like a fast estate. Mm -hmm. um, and that has now disappeared. But um, these cars, again, just look like taxis. And, you know, I think at the time they were maybe five, six, seven grand more expensive to get a 2.8 mm -hmm. turbo over a two litre. So that was, the, you know, the, the original Saab mm -hmm. engine, wasn't it? That was bought across yeah. the box all. Um, a huge amount of power. And today uh, there is no difference. So it's all about the condition of the car, of course. So I did have... Um, a 2.8 elite Vectra C estate um, with the revised front end, so from 2005 mm. onwards. Give it a, give uh, it think, a search, think, see if it's what are you, what's it on. Is it on Auto Trader or eBay? It was an Auto Trader. It's not here now because I'm having a look now. Um, give, it a, give it a search. See, it might have been relisted or something. Yeah, potentially. Um, but you know, I thought you know, same as your your Vectra elite as well. What a huge amount of car for the money. Um, the only thing you've obviously got to consider is there's probably a horrendous um, road tax bill to come with that car now because it's yeah that's the thing post 2006 cars and um, the last one you can have is a 55 plate but it dodges that super high tax rate which sends the Vectra VXR and these 2.8 turbos as about 500 pound a year tax of bloody things which makes it uh, yeah. more. Which, which and that's gives you more of a, things, isn't it? Uh, it? It does kill them. It makes where well, you've got to factor it in as to how cheap you can buy the car in the first place. Uh, if you're yeah. getting it for a super cheap price, then you, you've just got to factor in the whole life cost of what you want to what you want to do yeah. with it. But um, uh, there's one. That's a Vauxhall press car there. J3 VXL. That's looks. At, but you can see that's a, a luxury one because it's got the silver headlights in it as well, rather than the dark ones. Yeah. Um, and uh, those, they were optional 19s, I think, those wheels, I, you know, really rare wheels. Mm. We'll have to put a, uh, obviously a picture up when we do this podcast. But, um, yeah, it looked very similar to that. Didn't have the same wheels. But, you know, I just thought that's if you want to move stuff around really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought, wow, for just over three grand. What a, what a fantastic sleeper that is. So, um, yeah, that was that was the last car, really. Not quite as exciting as the others. But, you know, if you're a. Uh, Definitely, it's yeah, food for thought there. But I think I was going to do the same thing. I, I had the Corsa B, which sold, and I had a Vectra B, an Astra GLS, um, a Signum two liter turbo. I uh, can't remember what else. It was maybe some one other thing. Oh, Signum's a tempting car, isn't it? Isn't that a bit it's of an oddball car? 
Yeah, it's one that you really it gets forgotten about. Um, sort of two plus two yeah. seating arrangement with a fridge between the seats. Now, a really bizarre yeah. executive car, the heaviest depreciating car in Britain at one point. It was indeed good knowledge. Yeah, that was. Um, I think they looked at was it the Renault Velsatis that was based off, or like the idea was based off it at least. Was it the Velsatis? Yeah, it was inspired by it. I think that weird looking Renault. Yeah, uh, inspired by it, and then turns out that didn't sell any either. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wasn't great, but um, I think I actually got a fairly reasonable review from Top Gear when they did it. I think I don't think Jeremy Clarkson ever drove Clarkson, it. Clarkson drove it. He sat in the back and tried to drive it using mops or something like that to what the That's pedals. Right. That was 2003. Yeah. I remember that. We watched it in yeah. the hotel at Billing. That's how I remember that episode. Oh, really? So, so rare. Yeah, well. <laughs> a rare moment when you can remember from Billing 2003. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually a few beers, I imagine that. Oh, did you? Okay. I behaved at that one. We went to the performance Vauxhall show in June and got wrecked and went out night clubbing. Um, <laughs> at Billing 2003, yeah, I behaved myself. That was um, that was the first Very year impressive. that I went, which was uh, which then went on a year, uh, eleven consecutive Billings. Uh, I think the the new event at Cywell yeah. doesn't clash with any, so I should be able to go to that in 2022. Yeah. So that'll be well if they can good. try and capture the, the magic of Billing, which was. It was just far less hectic than, I mean, it was the complete polar opposite to Santa Pod, wasn't it? You know, nice yeah. leafy trees, more relaxed, huge variety of cars. Yeah, lovely. There for a few days. Hopefully, hopefully that's been captured because, it was, yeah, it was a pretty awesome event. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, I think that about wraps this up for um, this one. Thanks very much for um, providing your cars and all that. Um, no I problem. Catch, catch up with you again in, in a due course. I'll have, I'll go and dig some out and put some together uh, that we can that we can run through, and I'll have some updates relating to the fleet and things. I'm going out this afternoon to go and do some work in Kenzo's Nova to get it very close to being MOT legal. Might even be able to drive it, uh, take it out Oof. for a bit of a test drive, perhaps. Exciting. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll Great. sign off now. Cool. Thanks very much, uh, and I'll catch you up with you again soon. Sounds good. Cheers, so take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.